God good? Amen. Let's give God praise tonight. First day of the Feast of the Dedication, where of course we're going to be preaching. Thank, thank God for all the young for the children and the young people for their singing, the presentation concerning the first day of Hanukkah. Amen. Merry Hanukkah to you. Praise the Lord. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that God supplies everything in the Bible that we need to have for salvation. I told you I'd like to have fun. <clears throat> the reason... We have a two, uh, let me just explain this a little, a little bit right here, is uh, they're about, they say, uh, how do they say it, uh, two men, three opinions, well, but we have an explanation, there have been the explanations for, for the way they, they place the menorah, uh, the menorah is signifying the eight days that uh, the oil burnt when there was not miraculously burnt when there was only enough for one day. And so one school of thought is you put, you put one for the first day, set for the next day another one, until finally on the last day they're all lit. The other school of thought is you put them all up and then you subtract one. Amen. If I had to have a choice, I'd rather add one. Amen. To subtract one. But the third, my school of thought is to have them all on. Praise the Lord. Because uh, we only have church twice a week and we would have had them all on today. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're probably thinking, well, I'm going to give an offering so they can afford more bulbs, but that's not the, that's not the case. Give your offering anyway. But we, we want you to know that uh, that's, that's why there's only two of them. The middle one is a servant candle, which stands for the Lord, and uh, the, you use that one to light the rest of them. So we're thankful today to the blessing of the Lord that we can partake of Hanukkah. Praise of the word Hanukkah. It's a funny sounding name, but it simply means dedication. It's the Hebrew word for dedication. So we're going to be speaking about getting dedicated today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's read, if you go with me to the book of <clears throat> book of John, chapter number 10, verse 22 through 24. If there should ever be a time that we are seeking the truth, that the coming of the Lord is so close, is now. Amen. Every one of you should have a desire in your heart to love truth. You're into deception. You will fall into deception if you don't love truth. You will go for uh, uh, either uh, tradition or you would go to what your, your family has said or hearsay or what the majority of people are saying. But the Bible will spell it out for you. The Bible is all true. Every word of God is truth. There's not one false word in there. There's no discrepancy and there's no contradiction. Amen. The unlearned think so, and individuals that just want to go against God will bring up all these excuses, and they're all excuses. But I have found that God's word is completely true. And the, the, the part that is hard for us is that the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We don't hear enough or we don't read it enough so that faith can spring alive to, convin or co to convince us that whatever we need, we can have if we just have faith in God. Amen. You have to demonstrate faith in God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So... Once again, it's, it's, it's our job as the ministry to bring to you word, to cause you to grow so that you can be successful on that day, on the soon coming day. Amen. Amen. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the, temp in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said to him, unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Then we'll go down to John 
the 25th verse. Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My, my Father which gave them, gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Verse 30, very important. The message with this is all leading to here. I and my Father are one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Of everything else, he's trying to point out to them without saying, I am God, that I and they know that the Father is God. I and my Father are one. One. Savior, we're so thankful to be here in your presence. We're asking that you would multiply grace, that you would multiply blessing on everyone that is here today. In Jesus' name we ask it. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the feast of the dedication. Jesus attended an event that is what you would call uh, in between the, the Old and the New Testaments. This is what are called 400 years of silence, but they weren't really silent. The prophets wrote the events for those 400 years, but there was no prophets writing during those 400 years. It was already written before the 400 years. The book of Malachi was written and all the prehistory was written for the next 400 years. In it, the Bible says there would be a group of people that would do exploits. It tells that there would be a king that would rise up and defile uh, the temple. This happened in about 162 years before Jesus was born. And the events simply, I'll, I'll, give, I'll just give a really short background, uh, is that the Greek king, Antiochus Epiphanes, decided that they were going to worship, everyone is going to worship Zeus, and everyone is going to worship the pagan gods of the Greeks, to which when many of the Israelites began to do, they, the Lord rose up a family called the Maccabees, or the, the, the hammer, which means the hammer. It was Judas Maccabee and his sons that stood up and began a revolt that lasted two years. During these two years, they fought off the Greeks. God gave them strength to, because the Greeks were a very powerful nation. God gave them the ability to throw off the yoke of tyranny so that they could, on the, on the day that they, that they desecrated, two years later, on the exact day, they were able to rededicate the temple. And when they dedicated the temple, the scriptures teach us that from this point, uh, it became a very important, or it became a, uh, an extra holiday for the people that they kept, and Jesus himself signified his blessing upon it by being there on, uh, on Hanukkah, on the Bible says, and it was winter. How many of you, you know that uh, it must have been about this time of year because winter began yesterday on the 21st, on the winter solstice, and the uh, Feast of Hanukkah began the day after. So we know when people say, well, it must have been another fe uh, feast. It was the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. It was this time. Right. And so this is another nugget of truth that is given to us. And we understand that, we, and we learn that it, is, it was a very important time that signified the dedication of the temple. It is also a time where the scriptures teach us that it will be a time where the Lord is going to rededicate the coming kingdom. If you read the scriptures, the minor prophets, we are, given an instant, we are given an idea in the book of Haggai that on this particular day, the Lord is going to shake the earth again. And apparently, the cleansing of the new temple, the new temple mount, the whole area is going to be rededicated. So we are receiving news in advance. My faith tells me I must continue to get ready because I must see that day. I'm, ta I'm talking for myself. I must see that day. 
Therefore, what I, what, as I believed, so do I speak. That's what faith is all about. If it's in God's word, and I, mean, I, I have to, can't keep silent, I must bring it to your attention that that's what's going to take place in the near future. The Bible also tells us that when, he does, when that happens, he says, from this day forward, I will bless you. I don't know if you remember last year and maybe some previous years, but I've, I've brought to your attention that this is the time to dedicate and this is the time to set forth your agenda for the coming year so that he will bless you. Amen. 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 If you want your life to have that, that fullness to it, if you want your life to have that, that, uh, that starting point for the year, then this is the time to do it. Amen. Because in the future, he's going to do it, and he continues to, to allow us, as the church body, to add it, to accept it for our personal life so that we would be blessed. Yes, Let me give you an example. About, I lose track now, but about 12, 13 years ago, uh, we had, Hanukkah was coming up, and my wife was, had battled cancer for a year. During the process, uh, we came up to that point in time, and when Hanukkah arrived, I, re I was reading the promise, or I was reading what the Bible talks about at this point in time, and she was declared cancer-free at that time, and I realized what God's Word was saying to me was that from this day, I will bless you. And so we held fast to the commandment, and we held fast to the word, and we, had fe felt, we felt ourselves in the hand of God, and God kept his promise to us. From that day, he has blessed us and kept us in the blessing. It wasn't we were blessed for one year and then the next year. No, from in that episode, in that station of our life, we have had health, we have had strength, we have had vitality, and we have had joy and happiness in the Lord. But it's up to you to look for the joy, to look for the happiness, to look and realize, you know, from this day, God's going to bless me. <clears throat> God's going to keep me. I don't care what you're going through. It is your opportunity. It is your opportunity to receive. I think I'm getting a little bit ahead of my message here, but I'm here to encourage you. You see, when you read history and you realize what the history of the Jews were in that point in time, is that they, they freed themselves through effort, through much toil, through tears and blood, and two years of warfare they were able to take back because a one family stood up and said, no, right. we are not going to burn incense. We are not going to kill a pig on our altars. We are not going to desecrate the things that God has given to us. We refuse to follow the Greek mode uh, of worship. Uh, we are going to do it the way our fathers worship God. And this is the way... This is the way we know how to worship God. We know him as our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, before they knew God, before they had a name for him, they would reference him as, we worship the God of Abraham, we worship the God of Isaac, and we worship the God of Jacob. Can you understand that? That even though they didn't have no name, they knew of the individuals that received victory from their God and say they didn't know the name. They would use the personal names of those that have been victorious in God. Thank you, Lord. And so this is what the Lord wants to give us, an identity. You must have an identity. We come to worship our God, Jesus, because he said this, I and my Father are one. So if we worship Jesus, we are worshiping the Father. We, don't, we identify Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but more important, we identify with Jesus. Does anyone here identify with Jesus? <coughs> 
Has anyone been baptized in Jesus' name? You know what's happened? You are identifying yourself with the Father because you love His name. You love His Son, and they are the one and the same. The Jews, the Jewish leaders could not receive that. They wanted to kill him. But Jesus said to them, if you love the Father, you would love me. That, that's some powerful stuff there. You cannot love the Father without loving Jesus. In fact, you cannot even love the Father without loving his ministry. You cannot love the Father without loving the people of God. Because if you love him, you will love me. If, if you love the Father, you would love all the people here. It begins with loving Jesus uh, and having direct contact with him. This is why my life is dedicated to him. This is why my, my life is dedicated. When I wake up in the morning, Jesus is on my mind. When I lay my bed to sleep, to, my head to go to sleep, Jesus is on my mind. I might have been busy with all sorts of other stuff, but I come to the realization that it, should I not wake up tonight, uh, I will be with Jesus. Should something bad happen? 747 land on my house? I will be with Jesus. Yeah. Crazy stuff happens today. Cars, people are so drunk and on drugs, they drive into homes every day, it seems like. Drive into stores nowadays. If they're not on drugs, they're on age. A 95-year-old man drove into, I think it was uh, 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 Marshall's the other day. These things happen. These things happen. But when you serve Jesus, amen, those things are, not, are, are likely not to happen to you. I'm just telling you, these things happen on a constant basis. And the Lord, he's going to come soon. Yes, he is. Therefore, our dedi- we ought to learn to be, take the proper time to be dedicated. Right. Another amazing thing about Hanukkah is this is when Christ was this is when, when Jesus Christ was uh, conceived at this time of the year. This is the time of year he was conceived. John was, back, was conceived somewhere in June. Jesus somewhere in December area. And then nine months down the road is September when Jesus was born in that time. So it's easy to figure out. It's easy to look up. You can, you can, you can see what, 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 it, what it means. And, and this is why Jesus was there because he is what is called the light of the world. He is a light that lighted every man that cometh into the world. So he wasn't born at this time. He was conceived at this time. And that's important, that's important for the lovers of truth to understand that. It is an important revelation that you read, that you pick up by reading God's word and the, and the workings of how everything that Moses wrote, you look into it, you find out that these things are so. Amen. Therefore, we lack a lot of trimmings around here, except maybe the little red flowers. But you know what? I preach on that during the summer months, so I don't mess up your, your holidays at this time. You know that. You know I'm a kind and gentle person. Yeah. So, this is what the Lord desires, a dedication to truth. A dedication to, uh, I understand, a dedication. Notice what happened. They went and they lit the menorah. During the days of the Mac, they lit the menorah. Why was it important to light the menorah? Because in order to do the service in the temple, you needed light. You needed the lampstand to be lit so that they could, so they could go and they could eat the shoe bread. They needed it so that they could go to the altar of incense and pray. And they needed the light to illuminate everything that they were doing there. This is why they had to cleanse the temple. They took the stones out. There was no ark of the covenant. They took the stones out and they said, these have been defiled by pig blood. Because this, that's what 
Antiochus Epiphanes did with his army. They went to the altar and they killed a pig because they knew that, it, they, that the Jews abhorred eating pork. And I like pork, but <laughs> you got to love bacon, don't you? There's something wrong with you. Thank God I'm a Gentile. <laughs> but that was no place to put pork. When somebody said, well, let's, let's celebrate, we're celebrating, what was it, Hanukkah or, or Tabernacles? And they said, yeah, I'm going to bring a... a, a Pull pork. I said, you know what? You probably shouldn't pull, pull pork. <laughs> Just in case a, Jew, a Jewish man comes here, you know, it doesn't seem right. You can go home and eat it. and You can even do it here. It doesn't really, but it just seems to be something to it. And this is so important that it, they were dedicated. They killed, they, they slew a pig on God's altar. And so it took two years of warfare to cleanse the area. Once they cleansed the area, though, they didn't know what to do with the stones where the blood had fallen, so they took them out. They said, we'll wait till the prophet appears to tell us what to do with these stones, which was, there was no Ark of the Covenant in there anyway. But yet the priest would go in there and do the first part of the service. There they would go, and they would enter in daily. They would minister, and they couldn't do it for two years because of the oppression, but more than that, there was no light in there. You have to have light. Let me tell you something. There are many temples, there are many churches, there are many places that they have word and they have prayer like incense, but they have no light. And they have no light. Think about it for a moment. Think about it. We have light. Jesus and the Father are one. That ought to light up your life. That I tell you, man, I have a revelation. I'm not, I know who I worship. I am not worshiping in a blind state. I am worshiping with the knowledge that the Lord Jesus has placed in my life. If you, if you can take a hold of that and hold fast to it, the Lord, you will find that your life will become more dedicated. This is why they need the light there. They needed the cleansing and the restoration of the temple. This is why at this time we ought to rededicate our lives to a cleansing and making sure things that have crept into our lives, that we can remove the cobwebs uh, of thought uh, that are hindering the truth, that we can dedicate and say, you know, I've got to get my Bible reading up. I've got to get some prayer life. I've got to be able to go to the altar. They would go every day into the altar and offer incense. They would offer incense to the Lord. Every one of you should be offering incense every day unto the Lord. I don't care. I don't care. You know, you've you got to find a place and say, Lord, I dedicate this time and these moments. I will not allow my job, my, my family, my needs, anything. I must give you praise for a few moments. I must dedicate. Then go about and start doing your work. The Bible says even then you can pray without ceasing. First opportunity to get you is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Co-worker might say, what'd you say? I'm not thanking you. I'm thanking someone else. <laughs> you don't have to say it out loud. In your heart, making melody in your heart. Giving praise in your heart. Praise. Uh, praise has the word raise on it. When you praise, it goes up. It picks you up. It will raise your life up that hour for another time, for another hour because of praise. This is what they did. They ate bread. Everyone loved to eat. But the Bible says that David stated in this fashion, I have esteemed thy words of thy mouth more than my necessary food. That means I have loved the word of God more than breakfast. More than supper, more than dinner, more than midnight snack, <laughs> and the snack after that. <clears throat> you don't keep my hours, so you don't know really what I'm talking about. He says, you know, I have esteemed thy words of, my mouth, of your mouth more than my necessary food. 
This is why we offer prayer. We, we, we get a, 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 that big old hoagie, we get that, you know, that panda, and we should say, I, I esteem the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. Thank you, Jesus. In all things, give praise. Lord, I thank you for this food. Amen. I, said, I didn't say ramen. I said, amen. <laughs> I started thinking some other stuff here. This is why when you esteem God's word, more than food, God's in your, God's in your mind. He's in your purpose. He's in your being. I'm gonna, let me tell you, for eternity to be around the corner, you got to get excited and tell yourself, you know what? It's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth my time to have my mind stayed on Jesus. It, it must be time. Listen, the other day a, a, a man called, and did the phone call. My son gave it to me about two months ago. And I, just the other day, I, 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 I uh, remembered. I do something. I remember, hey, there was a call from, from an individual. Turns out the man is a Jewish man. He is an evangelist for what they call the Jewish Voice uh, broad, uh, program over here. And someone by the name of Rich, I asked Richard if it was him. He don't remember if it was him, but, but maybe he was out of, the, out of the body, in the body, I don't know. But <laughs> somebody named Richard told him about Pastor Lazarica that he preaches on these things. Somehow there's a conversation on a ride somewhere. And so maybe it was an angel named Richard. I don't know. Somebody told him. I asked Richard, well, I'm the only Richard here. He said, I might have. Well, who knows? But anyway, the man calls me. I called him. And uh, he said, I want to talk to you about the Jewish heritage. Well, well I've tried to tell everybody some things that God, to, to the United Pentecostal Church, to independent churches, to, to the Assemblea. And, and so at first they receive it. Man, that, that's there, that's there. But then they go away from it because it's not in their tradition. Is not in their tradition. Rabbits and trees mean more to them than truth. I'm telling you, the, I'm telling you the facts of life. I'm talking about the ministry, okay? I'm talking about the ministry. And so, this is what I have I struggled for a long time. And here's an individual. It might be the Lord opening the door, because one thing the Lord has told me is that there has to be a minister, There has to be a revival of baptism in the denominations, and there has to be, what's well, going to happen, I don't know, and in, in, in the Jewish world, there has to be a revival of baptism. Right. Not just knowing who Jesus is, right. but to be able to apply the knowledge of who Jesus is. That's two different things. You might know Jesus in one sense, on the outside, but you have to know him on the inside. You have to know him. Right. And when you have him on the inside, he knows you. And when you know one another, when you have that spirit in you, let me tell you something. When you have that spirit in you, it's, what, it's the fulfillment of Jesus' prayer that said, I pray for them that they might be one as me and my Father are one. How were they one? The Spirit of God was in them. When you get the Holy Ghost, we are one with Him. We are in Him. We are, yeah, you're a different person, but you are one with God. Then the Bible says you sit with Him in heavenly places. Most of the time, we're, sitting in the, we're down in the dumps. But when you start realizing the promises and the power of God, you can lift yourself up. You can be like Paul. You can be in a bad situation and yet sing a good song. Oh, it's time somebody sang not only a new song, but a good song. Not the blues, but praise unto his lovely name. They overthrew the oppressors. You want to throw oppression off your life? This is what it's going to take. Every one of us has an, has an oppressor. Something either from the past or in the present or is coming in the future, an oppression. You have to be able to be an overcomer and not be overcome. You got to overthrow your 
past. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the bars again. You're going to end up. Uh, you're going to end up uh, with the crowd. You're going to be end up partying. You're going to end up on drugs. You're going to end up like a fool if you uh, if you don't learn how to overthrow your oppression. Sometimes your oppression come in the form of other people that are are, are actually trying to overthrow your thinking. You have to stand firm and realize that I will not be oppressed. I will not bring negativity. You will not bring negativity in my life. You will not. Uh, if you want to go down, you can go down on your own. But my praise is going to take me up. Can I, can I make mention of this? This is what the scripture says. The dead praise not the Lord, neither them that go down in silence. Notice, silence takes you down. It's not neutral. It's not neutral. It is a downward spiral. Go down in silence. This is why if you can eat out a praise the Lord and break the silence, if you can somehow learn to make a joyful sound, if you can somehow learn to make controlled, controlled noise. And this was noise abroad, my friend. It was, you will start the upward journey. You will start to climb like you've never climbed before. You will raise, amen. You, when you praise, you will raise yourself from your situation and place you on a rock that is higher than I. Is there anyone that needs to have the Lord lift them up? Then praise Him. Then praise Him. Then magnify Him. Then say something. Make a noise. Tell God, I love you. Tell the Lord, I didn't know that. I must go up. <coughs> Woo, Jesus, I must. I refuse. I refuse to go down. I refuse to go down where I will make a sound. If I, if you're a mute, clap your hands. Shake your feet. Cry yourself a river, whatever it's gonna take. Whoa, why? Because from this day forward, you can begin to be blessed. From this day forward, you can make, you can rest assured your life will be blessed. Then why praise him in the morning. I praise him in the evening. I praise him going in and going out, coming out. I, I praise him and I'm thankful. I praise him for my kids. I praise him for my grandkids that are able to come to the house of the Lord. I praise him and I thank him for you that make it to the house of the Lord. I thank him for you that are overcoming and overwhelming the enemy. Sin shall not have dominion over you anymore. Should look around you. God is willing to bless your life. He is willing to bless your life. Remain standing. I'm just about done. That is the blessing that the Lord guarantees us. This is why he was on Hanukkah, on the day of the dedication. He was there in Solomon's porch. He had a message for them. He wanted, he had, they, they, they didn't know who he was, so he finally had to plainly tell, I and my father are one. What are you going to do with that? Then they sought to kill him. Some people will never like church. Some people will battle for light or liking church. You have to learn to love Jesus. Forget about loving church. If you love Jesus, that's the focus. Yeah. If you're a Baptist, you can't learn to love baptistry. If you are, if you are a, a, if you are a Seventh Day Adventist, you're called to love uh, the Seventh Day Adventist religion. If you're apostolic, you're not here to lo uh, love the apostolic religion. You are here to love Jesus. 
Jesus will show you what is right and what is wrong in your life. He will show you the way. He is the light of the world. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord today. <coughs> oh, let's clap our hands to the Lord. I feel a blessing coming on your life. Yeah, things look bad. Things look bad, but that's all right. Make up your point, okay? This is the bottom, as, as bad as it's gonna get, and it's only gonna get better from this point forward. Put your feet down, make your mind up, cast every worry, and believe the Lord. I'd like to open this platform. I want to invite you to come. Tell yourself, from this day forward, I'm gonna be blessed. From this day forward, I'm gonna pray. From this day forward, I'm gonna praise. I refuse to go down in silence. I rededicate today.